Hi, this is Doug Schneider. Welcome back to Real Hi-Fi. We're going to go out on the road again to Sim Audio where I talked to Dominique Poupart about voltage and current insofar as amplifier output goes. What led us to this conversation was a video I made several months ago about why using a 2.83 volt input signal is correct for assessing loudspeaker sensitivity. What I wanted Dominic to talk about is this relationship of voltage and current when a loudspeaker is being driven. Here's what he had to say. So Dominic, a little while ago, I made a video about speaker sensitivity. And what I said in there was, we put a constant voltage into the speaker. Well, constant providing the current from the amplifier keeps the voltage constant. So what I said was, we give a speaker 2.83 volts and it's up to the amplifier to supply current. Right. I didn't explain what that means to supply current. And I'm not an amplifier expert, you are. So this is a chance to say, what does it mean when the amplifier is supplying the current? Right. So um, <clears throat> laws of physics apply, right? So when the impedance goes lower, you need to have more current. And it happens naturally. However... What do you mean naturally? I mean, it's just laws of physics. Okay. But there's always a limit. Okay. Because while current is being drawn by the loudspeakers, the amps need to provide it. Yeah. And current doesn't just appear like that in the world, right? Right. So it needs to have the power supply that have enough current to be able to provide it to the circuit after. So what you're saying by naturally, it just naturally provides the current, providing it can supply the that necessary current. current. Yes, yes. Then what is the limiting factor in an amplifier in terms of supplying current? Can right. they all supply them equally? Obviously not, De right? Definitely not. Okay. But again, the same laws of physics applies. But the resistance is what limits the current from flowing. Okay. Okay. So you need to have the least resistance possible from the power supply itself, through the wires, through the electronic circuit, up to the binding post, right? Right. So you need to have that energy stored in the power supply to be able to provide all that current. In the amplifier. In the amplifier. To be transferred to the speaker. Yes, because then the transistors from the output stage is going to take the current out of the power supply and modulate it with the sound signal. Okay. And provide that current to the loudspeaker. Okay. But okay. again, not all amplifiers can supply current equally. Or Definitely. enough current or depends on volume level and current demand. So tell us what are the limiting factors in an amplifier? Well, uh, as I said, the power supply itself and the output stage are the main aspect of the amplifier that will be limiting the limiting factors of the capability of delivering the current. Okay. And I have two examples here. Okay. This is a small amplifier. This is a big one. Correct. Okay. okay. These are both uh, highly capable amplifiers, but right. of course not from the same level of current drive capability. Okay. So we have here an example of a Moon 330A, which is uh, fairly capable. Yeah. Just looking at the transformers and the capacitors, you see that creates the reserve right. of the current that will be able to be delivered by the output stage afterwards. The current comes from here. Yes. And it's a smaller power supply than than for example this one in the 868 this is huge this is huge right. okay so we have uh, 1.2 kva transformers twice because there's one per channel and you see those 27000 microfarad capacitors uh very big capacitors so there's a lot of energy being stored there and the size correlates with the energy storage it's a bigger reservoir yes it does and then this is where, from where the transistors from the output stage are going to pull the current to drive the speakers. Right. Because the transistors, what are they doing? They're taking the power from the power supply and modulate it with the music signal right. and drive the speaker with it. So the limit on current is literally within the power supply. Uh, yes, but the output stage of the amplifiers too. Okay. Because they're driving the current. So oh. they have their own limits. They cannot it. drive infinite current, right? Mm. So each transistor is like, for example, in there we have uh, uh, 16 transistors driving in parallel. Right. So each of the 16 transistors are going to drive the current in parallel to the loudspeaker. Oh, okay, so it's the reservoir and the ability of the output stage to actually deliver the current. That's Correct. 
the restriction or non-restriction in a bigger amplifier, more powerful amplifier, whatever. Correct. Okay, well, that was very informative. Thank you, Dominic. I hope everybody learned something. So I hope that gave you some insight into the voltage-current relationship and why it's so important to really think about the amplifier you're driving the speaker with. Some people think amplifiers all sound the same. Well, if an amplifier can't deliver sufficient current, it's not going to sound the same as one that can. So look at your loudspeaker requirements. Look at your power amplifier capabilities. I hope this helped. Thank you for watching.